Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to test out three different recipes for air dry clay that you can make at home using common household ingredients. These are great if you can't get hold of craft supplies right now, and they're much cheaper as well. I got everything I needed from local supermarkets and drugstores, all of which are still open during lockdown. Since I love playing New Horizons right now, I'm going to be making three Animal Crossing pieces using each type of clay, and then we can compare the results. First up, we have a baking soda clay. I was really surprised to find this recipe because I had no idea that you can actually make air dry clay using just two ingredients and water. Start by adding two cups of baking soda to a pot, followed by one cup of cornstarch. Then add one and a quarter cups of water and mix everything on medium heat. You can easily make this recipe using a normal drinking cup instead of a measuring cup, just make sure you use the same one for all the ingredients. At first it's going to look very smooth, almost like cream cheese frosting, but it will start to thicken. The important thing is to keep stirring all the time, and eventually the mixture will look like fluffy mashed potatoes. This produced a pretty big batch, so I'm going to divide the clay into three parts and test out different methods for storing it. The original blog entry recommends using a damp tea towel, and I'm just going to use one of Isabel's baby cloths instead. This is a fairly unusual method for storing air dry clay, so I'm kind of curious to see how it works. I'm also going to use some wet wipes and place this inside a Ziploc bag. And finally, I'm going to wrap it inside plastic, which is the usual method I use for storing air dry clay. I'm going to set these aside in the fridge overnight and see how well they hold up. Next, we've got a slime clay. About two years ago, I actually managed to make a DIY paper clay by mixing fluffy slime with cellulose fibers. This is the video and you can watch it here if you haven't seen it yet. Obviously, cellulose powder isn't something that you can get hold of easily, so I've always wanted to repeat this recipe using cornstarch instead. To start with, I made a basic slime using glue, baking soda, and contact lens solution. Then I'm going to add enough cornstarch until everything turns into a dough. Unfortunately, I don't have exact measurements for this recipe because I decided to eyeball the ingredients until I got the consistency I wanted. The main problem I had was that the mixture stayed too soft, so I ended up adding more baking soda and contact lens solution in an attempt to solidify the slime. I also used a lot more cornstarch than I thought I needed, but I finally ended up with a ball of clay that could more or less hold its shape. Now we've got cold porcelain clay. If done correctly, then this one is just as good as store-bought clay, so I'm really excited to try it out. To make this, you'll need one cup of cornstarch, one cup of PVA glue, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of baby oil. The recipe for cold porcelain is pretty flexible, so check the description box for substitutes. Then place it on low to medium heat and stir until the mixture starts to thicken and pull away from the size of the pot. So I was feeling quite confident here because my first baking soda clay turned out so well. But I quickly realized that making cold porcelain is not as easy as making baking soda clay. My big mistake here was not using a non-stick pan. Even though the mixture did solidify after a while, I noticed that it was firmly stuck to the pot and almost impossible to stir. The glue on the bottom was completely solid and about to burn, whereas the mixture on the inside was still really sticky. I realized this attempt was a complete fail, because the clay just felt really weird and it wasn't coming together. So I decided to try again using a non-stick pan. 
It's really important to use a soft spatula for stirring so you don't damage the Teflon coating. I think the most underrated risk of making cold porcelain is the potential damage to your kitchen equipment. Be sure to check the description box for tips on how I cleaned everything up, plus instructions for the microwave in case you want to try that instead. This time, the mixture started solidifying nicely and eventually formed a soft ball. The next step is to apply some lotion or baby oil on your hands and start kneading the clay thoroughly. I definitely recommend doing this part on a non-stick baking sheet instead of the kitchen counter like I did. Despite the lotion, I still found the clay very sticky, so I used more cornstarch to fix this. You know the clay is ready when you pull on it and it forms a teardrop shape. Now I'm going to wrap this in cling film and leave it to rest for 24 hours. Even though my second attempt at cold porcelain turned out fine, I still wasn't too happy with the process. It just felt very sticky and difficult to clean up. So I decided to try a third time just to see if it makes a difference. This time I'm going to use clear PVA glue, vinegar instead of lemon juice, and a bit more baby oil. This mixture was less sticky, but it did take much longer to solidify, and I think it's because the brand of glue I used contains more water, so the PVA is more diluted. However, after a lot of stirring, this did eventually turn into a ball of clay. I feel that making cold porcelain takes a bit of practice, so don't get discouraged if your first attempt doesn't turn out well. Just try again and adjust the ingredients a bit, and it will definitely work at some point. So now we have all three homemade clays. I left these overnight, and now let's check how the storage methods for the baking soda clay went. First is the plastic wrap method, and I was a bit disappointed to see that the clay has turned dry and crumbly. This is the standard way to store air dry clay, but it seems fairly unsuitable for the baking soda version. The wet wipe method was more effective, and the texture of the clay feels pretty much the same as when it was freshly made. However, I was most surprised by the damp cloth method, because this one turned out super soft and malleable. I think baking soda clay loses water very quickly, so it has to be stored with a source of moisture. Just keeping it airtight isn't enough, and it should ideally be used right after making. This clay has a naturally grainy texture, which should work well for making things like ice creams, cakes, or cookies. It's quite crumbly though, so it's not suitable for making things like flower petals or very delicate objects. As a test piece, I'm going to make an Animal Crossing bell bag. I'm going to be mixing it with acrylic paint, because I'm also curious to see how well these homemade clays accept color. The mixing process went pretty well, and I didn't need a huge amount of paint to get the shade I wanted. The clay itself is easy to sculpt, and it can be smoothed out using tools or water. It can also pick up fairly small details like the ribbons here, which I thought was pretty impressive. There was no cracking or breaking, which already makes it easier to use than Daiso clay. I only realized when editing this video that baking soda clay basically contains the same ingredients as bath bombs. I think you need to adjust the recipe to include more baking soda, but everything made using this clay is effectively a bath bomb. Now moving on to slime clay, and this one feels like a very very thick butter slime. The surface is smooth and elastic, which makes it unsuitable for texturing. It's also quite rubbery and hard to mix paint inside. Of course, I made things a bit trickier, since I really wanted to create a dark blue color for the Animal Crossing fossil. 
I think pastel colors will be much easier to work with here. I actually gave up trying to mix this after a while, so I just applied paint to the outside and spread it out with my fingers. The clay itself is fairly dry, so you have to use glue when attaching two pieces together. I was able to sculpt some basic shapes, and the final result looks surprisingly good. The only thing that worries me a bit is that the clay still tends to spread outwards like slime, and I'm really hoping that this doesn't end up in a flat puddle by the next day. Last but not least, we have these two batches of cold porcelain. The one on the left was made from white glue, and the one on the right was clear glue. To my amazement, the white glue clay actually ended up with a perfect texture after being left overnight. The clear glue one is slightly softer than I would have liked, but I'm pretty sure this can be fixed by adding some more cornstarch. For the test piece, I'm going to make a froggy chair using white glue clay. I started mixing and found that I had to use a lot of paint before getting the green shade I wanted. It turns out that this wasn't actually necessary, but more on this later. The surface of the cold porcelain starts to dry fairly quickly, so you have to work fast or keep your unused clay wrapped in plastic. This reminds me a lot of Modena resin clay by Padico, which is what I used to make my macaron bracelets many years ago. I used to have a jewelry brand with handmade miniature macarons, and that's how I actually ended up watching YouTube. I loved crafting videos, and one of my favorite channels was called Puffteek. She's an expert on cold porcelain, and you can see the true potential of this clay over on her channel. Obviously, my froggy chair piece is just for fun, so I'm not going to spend too much time trying to get everything looking perfectly symmetrical. I'm painting on the facial features, and normally you should wait until the clay is fully dry before doing this, because any shrinkage could cause the paint to crack. However, in this case, I'm deliberately testing for potential weaknesses in the clay, so I'm going to leave all these pieces to dry overnight and then see what happens. This is 24 hours later, and I was actually quite shocked after checking back. I was fully expecting at least one of the designs to look completely broken, but all of these appear virtually unchanged. The baking soda clay has turned several shades lighter, and you can see the difference on the bottom where the clay hasn't dried yet. So if you're going to be making this type of clay, then be sure to add slightly more color inside than you think you need. The star shape came off pretty easily, so I'm going to reattach this with glue. Because of its high water content, baking soda clay is prone to cracking, which I've read in several places. However, I didn't actually experience that here, which I was pleasantly surprised about. It could also depend on the humidity and temperature of the room, so this is just something to be aware of. Next up is slime clay, and this one really surprised me. The clay has spread a tiny bit, but it didn't turn into the puddle that I was expecting. If anything, the slime texture actually helped the seashell fossil sink into the blue part, making it look even more realistic. These cracks were caused because I applied the paint before the clay was dry, and of course, this is something that should usually be done at the very end. However, considering the subject matter, the crack texture actually looks really good because it resembles an ancient piece of rock. The base of the clay is still soft, which is completely normal, so just flip it over and let it dry upside down. Considering that this was an experimental recipe, I was really pleased with how it turned out. This is the only clay that doesn't require any heating. Simply make some slime and then mix in some cornstarch and activator until the mixture feels like a dough. And finally, we've got cold porcelain, which is definitely the best quality clay out of all three. This is tricky to make, but once you get the hang of it, you can use it to create some beautiful pieces. The first thing I notice is that the color is a lot darker. I realized that I didn't have to use that much paint at all, but the color difference is hard to guess when the clay is still soft. 
The solution is to use titanium white paint alongside any other colors when mixing your clay. Titanium white is very opaque and it will prevent the clay from turning translucent and the colors becoming darker during the drying process. I really hope this video is useful and here's a quick summary of all three clays. The recipes are also in the description box below so you don't have to skip around the video to find them. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching and please stay safe. Bye!